appearances. And Wendy, you didn't get any emails? Nope. Okay. Then do you want to do, do you want to go around and do an introductions before we go further? Great idea. Since we have Patrick, who is our new board member. He I knows was... me because I talked to him for a long time on Monday. So I'm Wendy. Okay. I'm Toby. I guess we do that. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, former, former teacher, I've been on the board for about two years, I guess, something like that. Okay, yeah, nice to meet you. Mark, you wanna go? Sure, I'm Mark Lee. I am the um, school liaison rep from the Oregon School District, and this is my first year on the board. And we appreciate you serving, so thank you. Maggie? I'm Maggie. I'm the administrative assistant at the library. She's the one that takes the great notes for our minutes. We've got John up. Hi there. Welcome to the board. Uh, I'm kind of a newcomer myself, so I can tell you it's a great group of people. And hope yeah, good you enjoy it. Thank you, John. Uh, Anne. Hi, welcome to the board. Uh, Ann Camillo, I am an at-large member. I guess I'm an oldie. I've been here four or five years. I'm not sure because I filled in one term. And But anyway, uh, just at-large member and happy you're joining us. Thanks. Okay. And Patrick, you're up. Hi, Patrick. Uh, I'm obviously new. Um, I'm here at Epic right now, and that's about uh, what I got going on. What room are you in in Epic or what building? I'm in the dungeons lair. So um, ah, the old one. Like got the, yeah. <laughs> we I actually have the... we actually have some pictures of my son and daughter-in-law in those two throne chairs at the day. Oh after, yeah. The day after their wedding. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, because they met at Epic. So instead ah, of having engagement of photos, they uh, they went back to Epic the day after the wedding and did all pictures there. So kind it's of a fun. fantastic place to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, welcome, Patrick. Thank you for agreeing to do this. We appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. So I will need a item number three is approval of minutes. So if I could have a motion to approve and Patrick, I know you've been on boards before, but because we are a board of under 12 people, we actually do not need a second motion. So if you're wondering oh, where the second is, good, we don't need know. one, according yeah. to Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. So may I have an approval for the October 2022 minutes? I move that we approve the minutes. Thank you, John. Any questions, comments, discussion? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Maggie, for doing those minutes. We'll move on to item number four, which is the financial report. Wendy, do you want to explain it first? And then I'll call yeah. the... Okay, great. Thanks. All right. So we are looking at both the register and the overview. A um, couple things to point out this month. So we're looking at August. Um, if you look at... I'm going to go through the register first. Um, account number 240, we've got a hot hot water pump repair. This is related to the HVAC system. Um, this will not be the last bill we see from Harker. Um, we've had a, a kind of a struggle keeping the system going. I think this, the changeover from warm to cold that happened so suddenly has been pretty hard on the system. It's not doing great anyway. Um, it was extremely cold in here on Friday, uh, but then sort of perked up over the weekend. Harker was here Monday morning found some other things. Um, we're good now. I don't know for how long, but we're good now. Um, all right, going through here. Um, the diverse collections training, that is a training that Tegan's doing. She is on uh, medical leave right now, but working remotely. And so that is a course that she's doing um, through Library Journal. Um, so she's, we've been talking about auditing our collections to make sure that they are representative um, and this is going to be a good way, I think, for her to do that, um, start that process now. Um, and I think she can do a lot of it with reports from where she is. So that's good. Um, nothing unusual there. Oh, under 345, 350. 
Um, so on the second page, we've got patio lights there. This is, I think, not the first time that we've seen patio lights, but I just wanted to kind of give an explanation. So the, we have patio lights on the south side of the building, quite a few of them on the, on the up and down the ramp and the stairs that come into the library as well as around the patio and then a couple more on the um, north side of the building. Um, and they were not attractive when they were installed. They didn't really match the building. They were sort of a weird gray plastic thing and they did not age well. So they were speckledy and not working and terrible. And we were, Kevin and I worked for years to try to find someone to recommend a replacement. And then we just finally chose one and ordered them and he and his guys installed them and they look amazing. They look like what should have been installed in this building when we built it. Um, and they are metal, so they should not wear poorly like the old ones. And this was, I think the last few of them, or you might see I might be backwards. Maybe this is the first time we've seen it and we're going to see a bigger bill. So we ordered two or three just to kind of test them out. We needed 32 overall. So I think you'll see another bill coming for that, but it looks great. I'm very happy to have done it. They're all working now, which is great. Um, so that's kind of a big check off of our list. Um, then in 355, uh, the youth department chairs. So we have real cute wooden chairs in three different sizes and a bunch of different colors with different woodland animals cut out of the back of them. Um, and they are adorable and child size, but we get a lot of adults that sit in them and, and sometimes they don't make it. So we have figured out that we can replace the seat without the legs. We can reuse the metal legs. So we do this every couple of years, we place an order for two or three. So I think this was three new seats that we then attach to the existing, um, legs. We have also switched animals. So for some reason, the monarch butterfly catches like it's the way the cutout is it catches on people's clothes and so we're making some improvements there so maybe we don't have to replace somebody in the future um you'll see in the next couple of months we've got some furniture replacement this is kind of the time of year that i end up spending the furniture budget um in sort of routine replacements so task chairs that kind of thing so you'll see more of those coming um quick yeah. question before you move on yeah i noticed the door and true value we've yes had two of them for 1137 on the same day oh. is that right or do you see it right there i do 824 we will take a look at that that seems okay. suspicious okay i mean maybe they bought cock cock and then went back and said we need more but i thought if they did it should still probably come out of the same account so we will thank you for noticing okay. that i will look that i will look into that okay Thank and then, you. yeah, I think that's all I had that I thought was notable. Going to the overview, things look good. We're in pretty good shape um, for where we are. You know, at this time of year, I always have what I call a monkey budget. So I have this budget and I'm predicting out the rest of the year to make sure that we're going to end up okay. I am trying really hard to spend our supply money this year because we're taking a pretty big hit in that account next year. Um, so I'm trying to stock up a little bit um, so that we'll be better set for next year. Um, but I think things overall look good. In the revenue section, there are a couple of things. Um, copy fees are, are cranking right along. So that's because we installed the system in January um, so that people are now paying for their copies. So that is really good to see. Um, in real time, we're almost at, I think, I think we're over 6,000. So that's good to know. Interest income is an interesting one. Um, so we had budgeted 2000. I used to budget much higher in this and the finance department got very nervous about it and suggested that for this year, we budget $2,000 and we're almost at eight for that in real time. So we are also budgeted low for it next year, which, which I kind of wish we hadn't had to do, but, but I guess better to be safe than sorry. Um, but that's all going well too. So I'm happy with, I'm happy with where we are with both expenditures and revenue. Um, does anybody have questions? Or do you want to call? Do you want to call the question, and then I'll, and then we can discuss. Sure. May I have a motion to approve both the financial register and the overview for August 2022, please? So motioned. Thank you, Anne. Questions, comments, clarifications. I had a question. Yeah. Um, just, I'm just curious, what mm -hmm. a Vox book or V O X book is? Yeah. Yeah, so a Vox book, so we used to do, and we probably still have some of these in the collection, but we did a, a book with CD, so it would be typically a picture book for kids, and then it would have like a little envelope in the back with a disc in it, so you could do audio and read it at the same time, um, and the disc always get lost or they get damaged, um, so a Vox book is sort of a, a digital audio player built into a picture book, 
So it's in the front cover and you open it and push the button and it will read the book out loud and then ding when you're supposed to turn the page. Um, they've worked out really well. You have to charge them, which we were kind of unsure about when we started because we they don't we don't come with a charger each. So we have to charge them in between checkouts. Um, but that has turned out not to be a big deal. Um, and they've kind of improved the design recently. And we are getting them in English and in Spanish. Um, and they've been a big hit. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? If there's nothing else Wendy can clarify, I will call the question. All in favor of approving the overview and the register, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to number five on the agenda, unfinished business, the policy review of the exhibit and display policy. So I did reach out to the city attorney about this. I have not yet heard back. She is just recently back from family leave and not back to full time yet. So I did not want to push it too much. Um, so I would suggest that we just table this for another month. I will make sure that we have some kind of an update for January. Um, my thinking on this as we move forward is that maybe it's just time to retire this policy and the, the exhibit space and then and then move forward with closing that in to be a meeting space. Do you so we'll, need a motion to table? Yeah. This? Yes, please. Okay. And I will motion to table it. All in favor of, I guess, discussion? Okay. Then all in favor of tabling this until our January meeting. Say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. New business, number six, the 2023 budget. All right, so this has not changed since you have seen it last, but it has been approved by the council. So I wanted us to have one more look at it and one more approval of it, just because it is official. Um, something I don't know if I pointed out last time, but I wanna make sure that I pointed out this time. Um, if you look in the first section, um, we're looking at, well, revenues, so this is going to be a revenue and an expense, but I just want to explain how the expenditure is going to happen. So this is under assigned fund balance applied. So it's $247,000. Um, that is money from, from the savings that we have had from previous years where we've not spent our entire budget, which I think is every year that we've been open. Um, and it's going to break down because it doesn't show in here very well a breakdown. It's going to break down into the new sorter, which is $212,000. Um, it's going to... $10,000 for strategic planning in the supply budget, $10,000 for strategic planning in the furniture budget. And those are kind of just guesstimates of like where we where we might spend that money. We may need to move that later, but it gets it budgeted and it's available to us um, so that we can, if we've got a project we want to do, because it is the last year of the strategic plan that we can, we can access that money. And then $15,000 is going to be upgrading the AV equipment in the meeting room. So that's a project that we're doing with Fact TV. They are absorbing, I would say, the lion's share of the cost there. Um, but because we use it for meetings and and um, we're going to move our board meetings into that room when we when we get together in January, um, and we need to be able to broadcast from there. So, so that's where that's going. Um, there was an increase both in net new construction, but we also got an increase from a TID closure. Um, and that is helping us afford the pay plan um, that was approved as part of this budget as well. Um, the pay plan worked out very well for us in that we have a lot of staff that are on the lower end of the pay grades and they got the, the biggest share of increases. So I think it's going to be really good for us as far as hiring and, and keeping staff. So overall, I'm happy with the budget. I've, obviously, I always wish there was more money to go around, um, but we... I had to cut some places, but nothing so drastically that I don't think we can get through the year. Any questions? If there's nothing that Wendy can clarify, I would need a motion to approve the 2023 budget, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mark. Any clarifications? Okay, then all in favor of passing the 2023 budget, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. 
The DCLS annual contract. All right. So this is something that we sign every year. Um, and it has been kind of unique the last couple of years. So what this is, is this, the county takes in money and has to distribute it to the libraries within the county. There is a very complicated formula that takes into account cross municipal and cross township use. So if you live in um, Verona and you check out in Fitchburg, Fitchburg owes Verona money for, for handling that checkout. And that goes between all the different libraries. It also goes between um, county residents that don't have a library. Um, we've had the same formula for a very long time. It is based almost entirely on circulation. Um, it Because of the pandemic, we all agreed um, that 2020 numbers were terrible. 2021 numbers were terrible. We're getting kind of back to normal in 22. But what you'll see here is that the average, it's an average of three years of use. And the average here is still 17, 18, 19, because that is the last three years of good data that we have. Um, so the this is just held steady for the last three years because we didn't want to throw the whole thing into array because of disarray because of the um, change in use because of the pandemic. Um, the other thing I want to add about this is that it's kind of an antiquated way to look at things just on checkouts alone. You know, there's a lot of libraries that do pretty good business in study rooms, meeting spaces, computers, technology, um, where people are not checking out at all. We have, um, with Dane County, um, hired a consulting firm that is looking at this formula to see if there's a way to update it and make it a little bit more um, modern, which I'm really happy about because every time we try as a group to look at it, I think we've all been doing it for so long that it's just really hard to see any other way of doing it. Um, I think we're lucky in some ways. For some libraries, this is a huge part of their budget. For us, it's not, um, which in one way is frustrating because it means our circulation isn't quite as high, but in another way is great because I think the municipality is where we should be dependent on our income, not from whether people are checking out here or there. So, um, there's a lot of different numbers in here. You'll see they did add some detail this year that we haven't had before. So the central service cost you'll see in, in point four um, shows what we're paying for delivery. I think a lot of Dane County libraries feel like we get delivery for free because the county pays for it, but that's not true. It's coming out of this formula. So they just kind of wanted to let people know that um, because delivery with gas costs going up so much in the last year, delivery costs were were. A little bit shaky for a while there. I think they've sort of evened out, so I think we're going to be fine. Um, but we may see some increases in coming years. Um, so yeah, and outreach. The Dane County Library Service handles all homebound services, so that the libraries don't have to do that individually, and that's a lot of work. So that's that's another thing that we pay for. Um, and then they do also give us um, money for facility upkeep. Um, so I think that was added in probably. 12, 15 years ago, just to acknowledge that there is upkeep on buildings for that are being used by other people. So, so the the I guess the end of this is that that we'll get the eighty two thousand sixty nine dollars um, as part of our revenue. I think this is, will probably keep up for one more year, and we're hoping to in, in implement some sort of new system in twenty twenty four. But this is what it is for this year. Questions. This is a complicated formula that I don't really expect anybody to understand fully. I don't think I understand all of the details of it fully. I think Dane County does, and I think it's another reason that I'm happy that we're looking at it. Who keeps track? Dane County Library Service. So they have a they have a director and staff. So their director handles this. Wendy, do we need to approve this document or do I just have to come in and sign it for you? Um, let's approve it. Okay. And then if you if you want to sign it, if you want to print it out and sign it and scan it back to me, we can do it that way. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Um, can I please have a motion if there's nothing to you need clarified? Motion to approve the DCLS annual contract. I'll make that motion to approve the contract. Thanks, Anne. All in favor of approving the contract, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. The annual uh, review. One, one more note on that. So it says that the secretary needs to sign it. We don't have a secretary, so I'm going to replace that with vice president. 
So we'll have okay. John sign that as well. So should I, what should I do? Um, what do you need from me? What's, what's easy? Toby, do you want to, we can either have a copy of it here that you can both come in and sign. Is that the easiest way to do it? Maybe? Sure. I'm in. Okay. So what sure. I'll do is I'll put a copy of this in a um, inter-office envelope that I will leave at the circulation desk. So if you can just ask at the okay. circulation desk, I'm just going to put a giant post-it note that says library board on it, and they should be able to hand it to you. And then you can just give it back when you're done. Okay, thank I'll you. Excellent. Thank you. Annual review of bylaws. All right. So we haven't done this in two years. We were holding off last year because we thought there might be a change in whether we were going to be virtual forever. Um, but that would have required an ordinance change, I believe, at a state level and a municipal level, and that did not happen. So here we are um, needing to update these. The only thing that I have before we everybody can make their suggestions is in Article 3, Officers, in Section 6, under the Treasurer's Duties, um, this is a change that happened at the city level that we are updating our paperwork. We've been doing this for a little while, but but it means that any purchase up to $5,000, I can make um, just with my signature. And if it's between $5,000 and $25,000, then I have the treasurer, which is Ann, sign uh, email approval, just give an approval for it. And then anything over $25,000 comes to the whole board. So this used to be at $2,500. Um, the city changed this to make it just a little bit easier for things to go through. Um, so I would like to do the same thing with ours. What other changes or edits does, do people think might need to happen to these? Wendy, I had a, I had a general question about yeah. the, the membership. Can members of a family be on the board? So in other words, we don't seem to have anything that would prevent me, my husband, my son, my daughter-in-law, if we all lived in Fitchburg, for from taking over the board. Should there be something on there or no? Because they are all citizens, they're entitled to be on the board. I, I don't I don't think it would stand up because I think you're a citizen and if you're a resident, you have you're eligible. the right to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean it hasn't been an issue, but just Good was question, wondering though. about yeah. that as, as I read through yeah. it. Yeah. Right. We have so many rules about that about employment, but not right at this level. Anything else that Wendy can clarify? questions about it? I think that's good. It means we're in good shape. We we did originally draft these with uh, a consultant from the South Central Library System. So I'm glad to see that they're standing up. Um, I think we need to approve the final approval of these in January because I did not get them to you 10 days before the meeting. My apologies for that. I always think it's seven days, but it's really 10. Okay. So do we need a motion to table that then? Yes. 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 Let's do that. Okay. I will motion to table the annual review of the bylaws until the January meeting. Any further discussion? All in favor of tabling that, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Closure dates. All right, so this is something we do at the end of each year, looking towards the entire next year of the dates that we're going to be closed, just so that you all know it. If we get complaints from patrons, you're aware um, of why it happened. Most of these, but not all, are paid holidays, um, and we try to do the best we can to uh, mimic the paid holiday schedule of the city. We're not exactly on the same schedule, but we're close. Um and we also try to observe the same way that they do observed holidays. So you'll see New Year's Day is, I believe, on a Sunday th this year, this coming year. Um, and so we observe it on the second. So we close those two days. Um, Easter, which is not a paid holiday, but we do tend to close that day. We've got two staff in services here, one in May and one in November. So that's always the first Wednesday of the month. Um, Juneteenth is kind of a big deal because this is the first year that it's going to be a paid holiday. So that was a change that was implemented um, to the city with through the budget process. Um, so I'm happy to see that. Um, the one that is always takes a little bit of thinking and planning and, and looking at calendars um, is Christmas. So the holiday for 2023, it's also very confusing because I want to think about next month, but 
but we're way past that. So for 2023, the holiday, we're closed on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day for paid holidays, and that is a Sunday and a Monday. So typically you would observe a Sunday holiday on a Monday, but we're already closed. Another complicating factor for next year is that the pay period ends on the 24th and starts on the 25th. So we're going to go with the 23rd, 24th, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We've done this a thousand times. Um, So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That is also what the city is going to be doing. I just got confirmation of that yesterday. Um, The problem with the pay period splitting it is that that everybody that had got paid for a Sunday that they weren't scheduled to work would need a day off the week before, but this is also the most requested time off of the whole year for us. So if we didn't do four days closed, we would probably be turning down a lot of vacation requests, which feels very bad. Um, We've been closed for four days for the last couple of years because we've been dealing with weekend holidays. So I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody, um, but just want you to see that. Um, and then we've got two days also, I didn't mention this, um, that we close at 5 p.m. So normally we would be open till 8, uh, but we close early so that staff can get on the road if they need to travel for the holiday. So that's before Thanksgiving and before on New Year's Eve. Any questions or concerns about these? Wendy, are we going to be uh, approving these dates? Yes. Can you add the word unpaid to those dates that are fall on a Sunday, you know, like for January, yes. 1st, it won't be paid. So we're not, it doesn't look like to anyone who sees this sure. that we're paying all these days. Yes. Thanks. Yep. So Wendy, do you want us to approve it once you have made those changes? Um, or- this list is really just for our benefit. That's so what I, I don't, thought. That I we don't think it we, needs to slow us down. Okay. I didn't even think we needed to approve it. Isn't it? Just I mean, yeah, you should. Dir- I mean, it's dir- director. It's, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it is technically an operational thing, but That's because it affects public. Okay. So I will motion to approve the library closure, closure dates for 2023. Any other comments, clarifications, questions? Then I will call the question. All in favor of approving those closure dates with the caveat that Ann has added for the unpaid days, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Where are we? We are at number seven, President's Report. Oh, that's me. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for serving. Um, and wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever it is you celebrate, and a happy new year, and we will see you all in January. That's it for me. Okay. We're moving on to library directory report number eight. All right, so I gave you already a little bit of a chiller report. Um, things are stable at the moment. Um, there is, Kevin is looking into maybe, so we have eight compressors two of them are have died already two of them only cool two of them only heat two do both so we were working on four all last winter and all summer and it's been fine-ish it's taken a lot of I think upkeep Um, one of them was on the fritz um, last week and so it was 64 degrees in here on Friday it was very cold Um, Parker came out got it up and running had some ideas about maybe being able to contact the manufacturer of the unit to have them reprogram the two that only cool to see if we could get them programmed to heat. Um, I don't know if that's even possible, but it's something that we're looking into. So the replacement of the chiller is moving along. It is, I think, behind schedule. There was some language that should have been approved a couple of weeks ago and hasn't been. So Kevin is um, trying to facilitate getting all of that done. The um, bids did go out and came back. So I think we've got one chosen. I think we might be looking at installing it in July, which is not great if things, if it doesn't, if it doesn't hold out. Um, I think the worst case scenario here is that we would have to bring in a temporary heating cooling unit on a trailer, park it in the garage and somehow rig that up to our current system. Really, really hope we don't have to do that. Um, but we'll see. Um, in kind of related news, we spent some of we 
spent some supply money this year. I made this decision. So we got um, some extra money from the friends to run a summer reading program. So we had some supply money that was left over and I made the decision to get um, fleece jackets with the library logo on them for staff. And I was real glad I did because when it was 64 in the building was the day after they came in. So everybody came upstairs, got a fleece jacket, zipped right up and then got through the day. Um, so that was some extra funding that came in that allowed for that. Um, but, but staff are all very grateful for them. So, um, window repair, the window is fixed and it looks fantastic and they did a great job and I couldn't be happier. Um, they had two guys outside the window on a lift and one guy inside and they were very careful at taking out, like they just kind of did this and got the old shattered window out into a blanket. So it didn't go all over the sidewalk. Um, and then got, it was, I, I didn't watch very closely when they brought the new one in because I think it was 160 pounds and it was on suction cups and seemed very treacherous, but they knew what they were doing and it looks great. So that's a, that's a big, big check off of my list. Um, and now we have, we have a vendor that we know can do it, which is good to know for future in case we have any more issues. Um, that's it for my report. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Number, number nine, committee reports, strategic planning, A? Eh? Nope. Okay, facilities. I kind of told, just you, went... told you everything I know. Okay, <laughs> per personnel? Personnel, we are, oh, I hate to say this out loud because I feel like I jinx myself every time, but we are fully staffed. We have Shelver interviews coming up because that's something that we're constantly looking for, um, but we're we're in a good spot. And fully staffed, Wendy, means how many people employed? 32. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, any questions, clarifications for Wendy? Okay. Then we'll move on to number 10, announcements. The next library board meeting is normally December 21st, but we have canceled that one. Um, the next one will be January 18th. Yes. Which is the third Wednesday of the new year. Yes, and we will be in the meeting room here at the library. Perfect. Yes. And I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mark. Uh, all in favor of adjourning at 6.02 p.m. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Then we are officially adjourned. Thank you, everyone. That was a lot. Thank you, everybody.